So, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, uh, Professor Jayanta Bhattacharya with us. Uh, we are celebrating uh, 60 years of uh, IMSC, and as you know, we have uh, talks by eminent uh, scientists from India and elsewhere. And um, today is our uh, speaker for this, uh, you know, ongoing uh, set of talks to celebrate our 60 years. And uh, nobody can be better than Professor Mani to introduce him because uh, he knew him from very beginning. And I d thought, you know, initially I wanted to introduce him, but after seeing him, I realized that uh, he would do a better job of introducing him and also tell about the speaker today. I request Professor Mani to introduce him. Thank you. Is this on? wrong? Well, this is a pleasant surprise for me. I was uh, not even sure I will be able to come to the talk. For some reason, I have a class today. I had canceled it because many students were away. Uh, they are going to take GRE exams, so they they away. Anyway, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce Jayanto. I know him from 1980s onwards, and various uh, things which come to my mind, and let me just briefly tell you that. I was already in IIT Kanpur, and that time I was uh, visiting University of Virginia. When he, uh, I came to know about Jayanto, and uh, Jayanto uh, called me saying he is going there. I said, uh, sure, you should uh, write, and uh, we will see that uh, it happens. Actually, what had really happened was something earlier, which uh, in some ways was a um, strange thing. I had heard from others that he had given a lecture in Washington after about his thesis. Uh, please correct me, Jayanto. Isn't the, Kamalesh Kar is the person who told me this. And uh, the lecture essentially started saying that there are two or three important problems in uh, solid state physics at that time. And uh, the, I have just solved one of them. And then he went on so showing that in great detail. And uh, Kamalesh Kaur was there in the audience, and uh, he mentioned that to me. So it struck me. So when he, uh, I went to Kanpur at that time and um, dug out his papers, and of course, they were fantastic. And we got it moving. Fortunately, Kanpur things moved very fast at that time. Ramachandran was the head, and then uh, at that time, we went to the dean. Everything worked out very well. Fortunately, he came. and. He started courses. There, um, he, I'm sorry, I'm taking a little longer. Please excuse me. There, normally, we people teach one course a semester and one tutorial. Here he comes. He takes two courses a semester. And one, Physics 101, which has 400 students, which is the most difficult course to teach. So he absolutely set an example of what we were all sort of felt this is very inspiring. He should be doing this. And of course, he came out to be a fantastic teacher there, continued his research in many ways. I learned a few things from him. He gave a set of lectures in turbulence at two or three places which I have attended. They are absolutely top class, as you will see now. And then um, from there, I moved to Allahabad. Then he moved to Kolkata at that time. And later on, also, he moved to Allahabad, and uh, we interacted for quite some time. Then again, he, he has gone back uh, to Kolkata. At, I have not has met him in Kolkata, but uh, I have not been there either for some reason or the other. So it's really a remarkable travel that he has done. He has helped many, many students, and many students have finished their PhD with him. And, uh, those who worked him were really inspired. I've had a chance to meet many of them. They swear by the quality of work that he does and the speed with which he can finish calculations. So it's a pleasure to invite Jayanto, my friend. Please start. Uh, thank you, Vani. Uh, now I have a tough time. Uh, convincing people that uh, money was even partly right. So uh, what we are going to do is uh, talk about turbulence 
And uh, the thing which uh, we uh, need to know is uh, what exactly are we uh, talking about. And um, the, it's going to be about dynamics. And that dynamics is, uh, un, uh, the characteristic of that dynamics is that that dynamics is very difficult to predict. So this is what one means by um, uh, the dynamics being chaotic. It's unpredictable. And I had a proof of it very uh, uh, nicely last evening, because for the last three or four days, uh, there was a cyclone originating in um, uh, the Bay of Bengal fairly south. And there were predictions about its path. And it seemed uh, that uh, 25th would be a bad day to travel. And uh, 20, uh, 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 then it turned out 26th is a, a bad day to travel, and so on and so forth. And it seemed that it would be wiser uh, uh, to travel on the 24th than 25th, and so on and so forth, until actually when it happened, it turned out that 24th uh, was uh, much safer to travel, and actually Calcutta was not affected almost at all. I mean, maybe a little wind and so on. So that unpredictability, that's there. I mean, you see it so often when, I mean, the, uh, when we were young, we made fun of weather forecasters. Uh, and then uh, gradually, I mean, it was a revelation uh, when um, uh, uh, one learned about it that the weather forecasting is not exactly a very easy thing to do. And you do see things go wrong, but uh, you can't complain. Uh, and so uh, that is what um, we are uh, going to be uh, talking about. Uh, but in a slightly different, you won't see the time part over here, because that is more, uh, um, let's say, um, calculational and technical. What you will be seeing is what is turbulence, which is essentially the same thing, but in spatial patterns. And therefore, it is, uh, while more difficult in one, because to get the spatial pattern um, is no easy job. But at least it is more, it's easier to talk about. So that's what we are going to do, uh, talk about turbulence. And so we get started. It is to make life simple. It's going to be homogeneous, isotropic turbulence. So uh, all uh, directions are the same. There is no particular bias in the pattern in, any, <laughs> in the fluid flow. But uh, uh, the uh, uh, simplest example which one takes is the uh, stirring of your coffee in the um, uh, cup. Uh, you stir it not too um, uh, slowly. And the pattern that you see would be uh, rather complicated if you uh, look at it well, um, uh, carefully. And uh, the striking feature essentially being that the velocity which you see of the swirling uh, fluid is a random function of space and time. And the goal then would be that if I say it's a random function of space and time, then I have to tell you uh, what the probability distribution is of that, uh, what is the underlying distribution function which is making the velocity field look random. Uh, but that again is a, um, a rather too difficult a problem. So you scale it down and say, ah, I'll be satisfied if I know the moments. And among the moments, you start with um, uh, average of v is obviously 0. So you want to go for the um, second moment, which is as written over here, the dis difference in velocity between two uh, neighboring points and uh, ask for the square of that averaged over all uh, space. Or, so uh, we um, 
Th this is the typical thing which everybody shows, and so it's worth um, uh, uh, pointing out that uh, here is a drawing of Leonardo da Vinci, which uh, I mean you must have seen a hundred times, but still, uh, uh, let me point out that what is after is this whole mess of fluid over here, and then he had the vision to understand that this whole mess is repeated on a smaller scale over here, and on a still smaller scale over here, and so on. So this pattern repeats itself from scale to scale, and therefore there must be some kind of scaling law in this pattern over here. You can take one small vort uh, vortex, magnify it, and you could get the larger one. So it's a question of getting the um, uh, scaling uh, right, and that is, that's where, in 1941, Kolmogorov entered the picture that what would be the simplest way of getting um, a handle on this scaling law. So he looked at as um, uh, the simplest thing, uh, as always it's go good to look at the simplest, and the simplest is uh, what we had written down, the V times V. So this is written in momentum space, and this has a physical meaning, integrated this correlator integrated over all spare uh, momenta uh, wave vectors gives you the energy of the system, total energy of the system. What Kolmogorov did was defined an uh, energy spectrum that how much energy is contained between the wave numbers k and k plus dk, so that's E of k, and that is the energy spectrum. So question is, do, what can I say about E of k? Who determines it? Obviously the dynamics does. So the dynamics has to determine the E of k. Now what is the dynamics? The dynamics is the usual hydrodynamic equation, which is the acceleration of the fluid. This is the partial with respect to, this is the total uh, time derivative. This part is the standard time derivative. This is the convective part of the derivative that, I mean, there is a gradient in the velocity and therefore as you um, move along, there is going to be a change with respect to time. So the local v will change with respect to time by this factor over here and uh, the repeated indices are summed over. So this whole thing is the total time derivative. On the right hand side, Newton's forces, here is the uh, pressure uh, gradient which is always there. This is the viscous dissipation uh, which uh, is uh, 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 there in hydrodynamics. And this is some random external force which maybe uh, you imagine that if there is a maintained pattern, maintain, then you must be doing something and otherwise it would not be maintained the, without the, uh, this f of alpha over here, things would have to decay, the pattern would have to decay to zero. So whatever the pattern is, this distribution function, if it is a maintained situation, there has to be an external what is called a stirring force, uh, keeping your coffee stirred uh, if you want to keep that pattern there. So that is what this f of alpha is. You assume the simplest situation, uh, incompressible flow, and that means the divergence of v is zero. So that's what you need to do your maths on. It is, the problem is that, uh, um, all right, uh, before the problem, the f uh, having this constraint over here removes the pressure in terms of the uh, velocity because you take a divergence, assume this force to be divergence free, and immediately the velocity is expressible, uh, the pressure is expressible in terms of the velocity, so the pressure is eliminated by this condition over here. So that makes life simple, and uh, we uh, 
So now the point is, one, uh, the thing that one wants to look at, if I want to go back to this, then you want to look at the energy budget. So you want to look at the energy budget. So if I multiply by V alpha over here and integrate over all space, then I would be finding that this is this part becomes the change of energy. Then there is this part over here, which if you integrate, uh, we can take my word for it that V alpha, you can, it will get zero. V alpha integrated, d alpha p integrated over all space again 0, assuming that velocity falls off at large distances. This one is non-zero, neither is this um, uh, 0. So this is the uh, rate of change of energy and that is what you see written out over here. The rate of change of energy is the dissipation and there is this which is the force which is which you are applying which is stirring energy which is sending energy into the system and the system dissipates it by this viscous action so here is the energy balance and this, so now you look at this energy balance and you see that this part has no derivative and all spatial scales are good enough for it so it will be operative at large lengths, large uh, spatial scales. This one over here, however, has a preference. So preference is that there is a derivative over here. So small scales are the preference for this term over here. This dissipation acts at small scales. Your stirring is at the edge of the cap cup and therefore it is at the large scales. So this is a small scale effect, uh, length scale effect, this is a large. So input at large scales, uh, dissipation at small scales. So um, uh, the steady state, so now you have a non-equilibrium, things are not in equilibrium because there is this external force being uh, supplying energy over there. And the, but there is a state, non-equilibrium steady state where this is equal to zero and this part is going to be equal to this part. So this is what, this is the kind of state we will be talking about. It is not an equilibrium state, but neither is this a, a, a steady, a, neither um, a, 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 is this a unsteady a evolving stage. It is a steady state where the rate of input of energy is equal to the dissipation rate. Now the question of scales at which they operate. Well, the scales are to be determined, that is, as I said, it's always the epsilon, the rate at which you are supplying energy, that will be determining whether you are uh, supplying it or dissipating it because the uh, it, tot energy has a dynamic balance and uh, the viscosity. If you work things out, this V is the V bar is the average velocity. The length scale that you get, uh, I have removed the uh, uh, viscosity coefficient uh, by so, uh, some standard manipulation uh, in terms of uh, uh, to write things in terms of epsilon and you get this scale over here. The other scale is very clear, uh, much easier to see that the, uh, it is where you are putting in the energy. So the energy input rate which is V square average, uh, V average square by T and T replaced by L over V and so the energy input rate is V cubed over over L and that is what this is. So this is the large scale, this is the small scale, the ratio is the ratio of, of uh, the Re Reynolds number which is something uh, which is defined as velocity times L by length by viscosity. So if you work things out, this ratio which is 3 by quarter, what I am saying is that this will work out to be the Reynolds number V times. So Reynolds number, a buzzword in everything, large Reynolds number, that's where you see the nonlinear terms dominate, small Reynolds number is linearized hydrodynamics. 
and the length scale difference, where you are putting in the energy and where you are dissipating the energy is Re Reynolds number to the power three quarter. So if Reynolds number is very high, you have a large separation, a widely separated scales and that range of our concern will be with the scale which is far away from both capital L and small l and that is what is called the inertial range. So this is all Kolmogorov. That is what Kolmogorov defined for us that there is this inertial range where his claim would be that life is certainly much simpler than what it would be at large scales where there is stirring going on or at small scales where there is dissipation going on. So Kolmogorov separates the scale uh, to begin with and you see what happens is that if you look at if the energy spectrum that I talk, had talked about before, if you now <coughs> And, uh, look at how what the energy spectrum E of k, which uh, that is what the y-axis is, uh, the log of um, uh, there is a log-log plot, and this is k over here. Sorry, uh, uh, of goes it. Uh, there is a k over here and you see that there is a linear region over here where the E k scales with k. So this pen uh, is uh, pretty a uh, few years old. The power law, power, the exponent E k proportional to is k to the power minus five by three. That's this line over here. Uh, this is uh, uh, 1024 cubed uh, in which the uh, computation was done. Today that number is up to uh, certainly uh, the, uh, the 5, uh, 4096 is common, uh, even bigger are there. And the thing is that the answer still remains very, very close to 5 thirds all the way down. Over here you are seeing the dissipation range uh, split off. So, 5 by uh, dissipation takes up over here, uh, but the, if you push this back another two or three decades, you still see uh, um, before the stirring takes over, you see the Kolmogorov thing being quite valid. So, it is real. I mean, it's at least it's real numerically, and it is real in the lab. In the lab, it, it is uh, there are hundreds of other things which they experimentally say, but two to three decades, no doubt about that. All right. So, what did um, uh, Kolmogorov do? Kolmogorov said something almost uh, trivial that. Uh, if you look at this range over here, in wave number space, it is uh, small k0, that's k0 is 1 over L, and this is where kd, uh, you look at the energy spectrum, what could determine the energy spectrum? The energy, so what's happening? We are putting in some energy at large scales. It is filtering down to small scales. So, the, uh, and th because there is a steady state, it is the same amount which has to filter through every stage. And therefore, this rate, is, uh, the rate at which the energy is flowing through the system, that is a parameter and so is the wave number k. So E of k is going to be determined by these two chaps alone. Do a dimensional analysis and E k is proportional to k to the power minus 5 by 3. This was Kolmogorov 1941 and that, uh, uh, the, that essentially started out this whole game of trying to understand uh, what's going on. Well, uh, if you look at it in R space, you look at the uh, velocity difference between two neighboring points and uh, dot it with R to make it a scalar, uh, raise it to the power n, the Kolmogorov argument would give you this. So if n is equal to 3, you should get epsilon times R. Kolmogorov actually started from Navier-Stokes equation and proved that that is correct and that's the 
only exact answer in all of three-dimensional turbulence, that this three power, v, delta v to the power three average is minus four, five epsilon r. So, that is beyond any doubt. So, this is, so this is a extremely um, uh, important thing to um, uh, have because you can, you will sort of uh, do, if you do anything and if uh, you try to extend it a bit and this law fails, then you are gone. So, it is a tremendous check on. So, all right, what about uh, n equal to 2 in uh, a, a space uh, k to the power minus 5, three, 5 by 3 there. In the uh, coordinate uh, space, it is corresponds to r to the power 2 by 3. This constant c over here, a uh, large number of numeric, uh, numerical work and experimental work seem to suggest a number uh, close to about um, uh, 1.8. All right. So, now the, the, we are uh, very good, but let us try and talk about n equal to 6. So, this is v cubed v cubed. So, we are talking about the question of v cubed v cubed. So, this is uh, v um, uh, 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 delta v to the power n where um, n is 6. So, now what, what is the significance of this um, uh, v cubed? You look at the local energy transfer rate, it has to be v square over t. It is dimensional, this talk is going to be dimensional analysis all the way. So, it is v square uh, over t and uh, uh, t is uh, r over v. So, the local energy transfer rate is the local velocity cube divided by the local uh, length scale. So, Kolmogorov says that uh, the uh, uh, lo local uh, uh, energy transfer rate is constant. So, energy because the picture on which Kolmogorov built his theory was that the energy gets input at this large scales and continuously transfers down to the uh, lowest scales where it is dissipated and uh, there is a, a non-equilibrium steady state where this continual uh, no loss flow of energy. If that is so, this epsilon r is scale independent and therefore, v cube v cube has to scale as r square, which is what the other, uh, the previous formula uh, would give you. Um, the, the one over here, you put n equal to 6, you get r square. So, that is uh, just getting, but now you see the experiments and the numerics, it gives you not r to the power 2, but r to the power 1.8. And here comes the first conflict. So, you have to use, you bring in uh, what uh, in critical phenomena used to be called uh, anomalous dimension and therefore, uh, E at local E at x and local E at x plus r scales as r to the power minus mu and not as is not a constant epsilon square. So, this is what is called intermittency. Intermittency, for you will see why in a minute, it is because this uh, the state which Kolmogorov pictured is this whole uh, energy cascading down without any problem. This over here is implying that there are blobs where it is not doing so and therefore, uh, the, uh, it is called uh, intermittency and uh, the deviation from Kolmogorov in general that gets the, uh, clubbed as intermittency. All right. <coughs> so, you Kolmogorov uh, himself uh, was um, a sort of uh, had to uh, try and fix it and what he uh, did was essentially what we today would say is that he looked at, 
his way of doing it in uh, 41, where the epsilon was considered a constant as a mean field theory. So, you picture this what I have been saying so far as a mean field theory, where the mean field is in the energy which is flowing down the scales. And uh, Kolmogorov and Obukov took this stance in 62 that <coughs> instead of saying that this is a constant, use a distribution a mild distribution for uh, this energy epsilon, a distribution which would uh, epsilon is positive, so it uh, that, but you want the distribution to be from minus infinity to plus infinity, so change to log r and uh, log epsilon, and therefore uh, it is a log normal distribution that the log of epsilon has a normal uh, distribution. If you do that you and you calculate the local epsilon to the power p by 3, you get an answer uh, which is like uh, exponential this p m by 3 p square. So, that is all. So, but <coughs> now what you can do is you look for, I mean uh, you get the velocity raised to the power p because of this uh, epsilon r is v cubed and you can compare with the exact result of p by 3 and establish this m and sigma is related by this. And now you have all the moments in terms of epsilon bar and r no longer um, um, uh, following the, uh, the old Kolmogorov wisdom, but nailing it to the fact that there is this um, uh, uh, intermittency pro, uh, using a distribution and nailing the distribution parameter at the only exact result known. Well, this is um, this does things somewhat better, but still not the final answer. So, <coughs> that, so things are a little more complicated, and so the all of 80s and uh, the couple of decades uh, through the 80s and 90s, uh, people looked at what is uh, spottiness of the uh, turbulence process that the <coughs> dissipation uh, takes place at all scales. So, every scale that you look at, there is a certain amount of dissipation and uh, the invari uh, sorry, the invariance under this scale transformation, Navier-Stokes equation would have a, um, uh, is invariant and the uh, local uh, dissipation rate scales as um, alpha minus 1 and um, so alpha if you recall this dimension less that would fix a uh, um, value of alpha, but you do not you cannot do that that is what went wrong. So, you play games with it which uses a lot of fra uh, fractal picture and so on. Uh, I will not go into that, but uh, the best picture of that was actually a very nice uh, uh, way of thinking by uh, Srinivasan and Menevo, uh, which is very, very nice and therefore, I will spend a minute or so on it, that you imagine that there is this scale energy at a large scale and then it breaks up into two bits with probability p and q. So, p goes left, q goes right and then again the same thing happens, p goes left, q goes right, same over here and what you do, <coughs> you want to continue this cascade all over. So, you are picturing this, this is essentially that you are in a one dimensional line, this dissipation process is taking place, you get a effective dimension of this set over here and add 2 to it in a three dimensional space. So, this would be like a Cantor set and you get the 
a Cantor-like set, you get the fractal dimension for it, add uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, two, and you can get a picture of the uh, n e to the power, the delta v to the power n, and uh, so on. So that was this very nice way, uh, way of picturing it. It is not. Um, uh, the, it gets you the fractal dimension as what I see over, uh, show over here and works very well, but not well enough to be the final answer, not supposed to be either, uh, but then uh, it um, uh, certainly led to further works, more complicated, but at the end of the day, uh, very good fit, but uh, to many low, uh, like, but you can always go to a higher moment where it is, doesn't work so well. And so uh, uh, things remain sort of a bit, you don't know what the final answer is. Let's put it this way. But you have a fair idea that what you know for certain, that the Kolmogorov picture is good, but it has a fault. Uh, which is of the at the 10 percent level that for uh, the picture being that it is continuously cascading down that is not true so you want to correct for that you get various ways I mean first you do the simple uh, minded thing which Kolmogorov and Obukov did and you get a distribution of the postulate a distribution of the uh, energy clumping and get an answer which takes the 10 percent uh, to maybe of the order of um, uh, 1 to 5 percent. And even that, uh, that is not enough. Then there is this uh, uh, Srinivasan Menevo result where you think of it as a fractal set, try to get the fractal dimension by some uh, clever trick or other. Uh, there are, uh, this is the simplest to talk about, uh, goes, does very well. I mean, it's better than 1 percent, but no, so anyway, the others which um, are there are also uh, of that order, maybe slightly better, but at the end of it, there is, I mean, quantitatively, you don't have an uh, answer which starts from Navier-Stokes equation and tells you that, look, do this, 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 and this, and here is the answer. That is not being done or not even attempted. So all right. Uh, that, so that was um, uh, the uh, uh, energy uh, cascade and so on. Energy was a conserved quantity and so there were. Now, be, um, uh, before I leave this, uh, see, uh, the why don't, uh, there, there are other branches of physics which uh, were very difficult, like critical phenomena for one, uh, various aspects of high energy physics in, in another. And they got out of the mess in some ways or other. And why didn't turbulence get out of that mess? The problem lies in this inertial, everything you want is in this no man's land called inertial range. Critical phenomena wanted it asymptotically at the large length scale the correlation function becomes infinitely big and you want to look at that. So there was the renormalization group fixed point which corresponded to the uh, 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 infinite correlation length and you had a starting point. High energy physics went the other way and there was this question of asymptotic freedom which helped the uh, uh, th uh, things get moving. Over here, you can neither go very far there, nor can you go, it is all you are supposed to do it in the middle, and this inertial range, and get it out. And that is where, where all, the, all hell breaks loose. So if there were a clever way of going whether to that limit and coming back or to the high, uh, the low um, R limit and coming 
back, uh, uh, coming back here uh, or to the uh, intermediate arc. That would be, but the point is that neither of the two limits are so, because each are sort of important and therefore the uh, way of handling one without the other seems to be a mess. But that, 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 that's what it is. So that's an, uh, d equal to 3. We come to a different complication in d equal to 2. D equal to, we talk, over here it was just the energy flowing. Energy was the only conserved quantity. That was the only chap who had the right to flow. D equal to 2, there is another conserved quantity. So here is what we define a new quantity. We can uh, call a vorticity, which is this curl of V. And uh, curl of V has only one component in D equal to 2. And if you look at this S, which is omega square uh, integral, it's called the entropy. And uh, that's also a conserved quantity. So you have two conserved quantities. You have energy, you have entropy. Which way do they flow? So that's the, um, uh, now that you have two of them, uh, you have to worry about uh, whether both of them flow from high k to uh, uh, high uh, large length scales to short length scales, or one of them goes one way, the other goes. So there has to be, so you have to decide. Now, how do you do that? So that's the, uh, th this is the new uh, twist when you have more than one conserved quantity in your system. So we, uh, so I want to focus on something where this is uh, quite trivial but very interesting. And this wasn't, I mean, uh, uh, to get the, the, this far in the argument uh, was uh, actually uh, uh, not very long ago. I mean, a couple of decades maybe, but no more than that. So what you do is focus on the nonlinear uh, non term and look at the rate of change of uh, energy. So V alpha minus K, V alpha dot K. And that's the um, uh, nonlinear term here. It is V with a, at, uh, moment, at momentum P, uh, this at momentum K minus P, and this at minus K. So there is this what is acting, what is uh, uh, at the base of the change in energy at scale k is this triad over here. And so the process this triad has, if I think of it as p, q, and k, this is a triad with p plus q, p plus q plus k equal to 0. And you need to consider all such triads and come to uh, the pure picture of uh, where, which way is a conserved quantity flowing. All right. Let's just instead do a, an, a, a, a one triad thing. It is k, 2k, and minus 3k. So that satisfies this p plus q plus 2k, and with the energies E1, E2, and E3 and impose the conservation laws on this triad. So I'm going to have, so E1 plus E2 plus, so that's conserved. So it is delta E1 plus delta E2. If I have a variation, then delta E1 plus delta E2 plus delta E3 equal to 0. The entropy is an, a k square times the energy dimensionally. So the uh, corresponding entropy conservation tells you that it is delta E1 plus 4 delta E2 plus 9. It is the 2 square and the 3 square over here. That's equal to 0. You solve for it and you get delta E1 in terms of delta E2, which is the middle chap over here. So delta E1 is minus 5 by 8 E2 and delta E3 is minus 3 by 8 delta 2. So delta E1 is greater. So delta E1 is greater than delta E3, so energy flows in the backward direction. So with this previous thing, there was this very clear cut picture where we had the energy flowing from um, uh, uh, the uh, large length scale to the short length scales. Now you have this uh, uh, two dimensional system with another conservation law and you now have to fiddle with 
both of them at the same time do this uh, sort of back of the envelope calculation and you say that look energy flows backward and entropy forward. It works. So, you do the numerics and you find that that is indeed true the forward uh, the uh, uh, energy uh, entropy cascade which is in the forward corresponds to a uh, um, uh, spectrum of k to the power minus 3 k to the power minus 5 by 3 shows up uh, in the uh, uh, small k region the entropy shows up in the large k region. All right, so that is uh, uh, the So, uh, uh, as I said, uh, this is just what I said that the backward cascade and that is energy which is k to the power minus 5 by 3. You um, work it out for the, um, uh, it is in terms of entropy flux, the dimension is this, you do a dimensional analysis once again and it is k to the power minus 3 works, but uh, uh, th there are lots of uh, problems over here. Uh, number one, uh, is there a log, Two uh, uh, is there a log over here, that is a, oh, a big question and uh, some other uh, small issues, but at least I mean the basic picture is what you see over here. Now, you go to another um, uh, system, which I mean the kind of fluid that uh, we are uh, um, um, uh, very familiar with the air in the earth's atmosphere, but it is a rotating system. So, there is the um, uh, rotation of the earth which causes the layers adjoining to it would have some rotation. So, then first uh, next thing what we want to do is talk about uh, um, uh, an, uh, rotating fluid and what is the, what, what do I expect over here? Well, here you expect something problematic in uh, because you, this is the dynamics that here is the nonlinear term, here is our pressure which I could uh, um, uh, remove in favor of the, so I mean effectively a part of the nonlinear term, but here is the Coriolis force V times omega and that has to be included. And now if I in increase this omega over here, then there may come a time when this eclipses this over here and then it is no longer uh, a Kolmogorov situation. So, when does that happen? So, that would require uh, uh, again uh, comparing the scale of this which is V square over L with the scale of this which is V times omega. So, you compare that to, and you find out that this is weak if L is big and L is bigger uh, than uh, V over omega and uh, or that what that works out to in terms of K is wave number smaller than this omega and this energy transfer rate over here, it is going to be Coriolis force dominated. So, uh, uh, the uh, uh, you have, so you are going to see a crossover. If k is smaller than this, then there is going to be rotation playing an important role and the energy transfer rate is going to be determined by the angular velocity and the wave number. So, it is the angular velocity which is the important chap and not this energy transfer chap anymore. So, it is going to be determined but these uh, 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 small uh, wave numbers by the angular velocity and the wave number, the corresponding answer is you do a dimensional analysis. As I said, everything is dimensional analysis and this gives you k to the power minus 3. 
But the, there is the other fact of this high speed, it is con, uh, it's going to confine you to the xy plane. So it is, if the omega is in the z direction and omega is very high, then the forces would be larger, uh, you would be confined to the plane over here. So this minus 3, there is going to be a dimensional reduction and is uh, k to the power minus 2, which you have to compare with the k to the power minus 5 by 3. And uh, over the last five or six years, it is pretty clear that uh, there is this crossover from k to the power minus 2 to. There is a finer point over here that there is anisotropy, and so I need to uh, differentiate between k perpendicular and k parallel. So k parallel to omega, k perpendicular in the plane, and so this, what you see as this uh, minus 3 over here is actually, uh, a, it is k perpendicular to something, k parallel to something, and the ad addition is the 3, and uh, that I have, uh, th that, that's not, that complication is not worth uh, talking about really, um, uh, uh, but uh, it, uh, I mean, for uh, talk of the, but but the point is that because of that, that is essentially telling you that at high omega, it is the two-dimensionalization, and the k perpendicular and the k parallel, it is only the k perpendicular which really remains, and that gives you the my k to the power minus two. All right, so uh, the. Uh, the fi finally, the last bit that I want to talk about is that another complication that I have now a different kind. This was a crossover which we saw uh, that you went from the, the spectrum changed from this to this as k changed. We'll talk about a crossover once again uh, in the um, uh, next problem, but it is going to be a crossover of a slightly uh, different variety. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, will this also apply to large astrophysical objects? Okay, what, what? Will this, or this the spectrum change with wave number? Yeah. Does it also apply to large astrophysical objects? Uh, the, uh, you mean the rotating, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, does, does, yes, sure. I mean, that is where people are, I mean, the, the, all the applicational part of this goes uh, into the rotating objects, astrophysical, uh, yeah, sure, absolutely, yes. So uh, the ne next one is uh, convection, convective turbulence. That is, I have a fluid uh, between uh, two parallel plates, let's say, and I maintain a temperature difference, and I'll take the um, uh, path uh, initially, the one which is sort of more um, colorful, in the sense that if I take the, the bottom uh, top plate uh, to be hot, and the bottom plate, uh, so uh, rather the bottom plate to be hot and the top plate is uh, cold, um, uh, you have a top heavy situation. And so the movement begins with the top layers coming down and so that's convection. And convection happens as uh, in the form of rolls and as Rayleigh uh, calculated happens at a Rayleigh number of 1708. So 1708 you have convection starting bef below that it is going to be a static fluid then the uh, uh, convection taking place, and then as you uh, increase the Rayleigh number still further, the, um, uh, the rolls change to wiggling rolls, and then from the wiggling rolls to more complicated uh, wiggling patterns, and then to chaos, and finally to turbulence. So our, uh, so that's why it's a more colorful thing. Uh, uh, after a few minutes, I will have to resort 
to um, the uh, reverse situation where it is a stable, this is the unstable stratification. Uh, I will switch to stable stratification after a few minutes to uh, make, uh, remove a particular complication, but uh, this is actually, I mean, a uh, nice uh, physical setting. Uh, so, anyway, I mean, we start with this. And now the uh, kinetic, so spect, whose spectrum am I looking at? Always kinetic energy. I mean, uh, whether that is right or wrong, uh, I, I, I would not be able to tell you, but the point is that Chandesh, uh, the, the uh, Kolmogorov started with kinetic energy, everybody talks about kinetic. So, whenever you see the word energy spectrum of turbulence, even if there are hundreds of kinds of other uh, um, uh, uh, factors involved, for example, the, um, uh, uh, MA, uh, the entropy uh, as entering in the through the rotation, magnetic fields entering in magnetohydrodynamics. Uh, and uh, the um, uh, 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 this uh, uh, polar, um, uh, the potential energy due to the stratification over here, uh, the spectrum spectrum belongs to kinetic energy. So that is uh, something which you need. Uh, uh, otherwise, I mean things get, yeah uh, uh, nothing would make sense as we go along. So all right. So the, uh, now I need uh, the dynamics is this. Here is uh, the additional force, which is gravity, and here is the temperature is a variable, and temperature diffuses according to here is the time derivative, and that is the diffusion part. So now the uh, the first thing that has to be done is that this one has an equilibrium uh, uh, state, uh, which corresponds to. Uh, constant uh, gradient of temperature. So, that I do not want. I want the equilibrium state, uh, only equilibrium state that I want is the zeros. Everything is 0, so which is what it was till now. So, I want to make a transformation, so that uh, the uh, this part is transformed and uh, we do that uh, little thing and you do it by using uh, a a delta T, which is this is the conduction state profile. You want to remove that from the problem. So, you define a delta T, which is T minus that, and what you get is a velocity. The, uh, uh, this is your uh, DVDT, here is the pressure force, here is the buoyancy force, and that is uh, the dissipation, and here is the uh, change in the, but it is also driven by the velocity in the. So, now there are two fluxes over here. There is the velocity flux, which you get out of this quantity over here, which is the uh, kinetic energy, there is the kinetic energy flux, and there is the other flux which has to do with this nonlinearity over here. So, delta t times delta t dot. So, this is the delta t square, which is a flux corresponding to the dynamics of the um, uh, thermal variable, and so we have to deal with. Uh, now, suppose which is the, do so it is a question of which is the dominant flux. Suppose that it is the Kolmogorov which is the dominant flux, then the spectrum is as we have seen that this. But suppose it is not the dom dominant flux, suppose that it is the and the temperature flux, which is dominant, then you redo the Kolmogorov argument as was done by Bolgiano and Obukov in 1959 and 60, and you get instead of k to the power minus 5 by 3, and you find that it is minus 11 by 5. So, minus 5 by 3 and minus 11 by 5. And the urge for every most people over the um, last century um, uh, was that uh, uh, the 
uh, what you want to do uh, is um, uh, essentially add the what is the total spectrum? You just add this and this, and the total uh, energy spectrum is a sum uh, over here. And uh, therefore, if you add at low k, this will dominate, at high k, this will dominate. So, that is the, uh, that, that would happen, and that is what people kept looking for for years, and actually never saw it. So, if you are in uh, instead of um, uh, the coordinate space, if you are in uh, if instead of wave number space, if you are in coordinate space, then it is r to the power 2 by 3 and this is r to the power uh, Bolgiano is r to the power 6 by 5. So, at large r you expect Bolgiano, at small r you expect and what do you see? Well. What you see is uh, something, um, uh, it is all uh, very difficult numerics, very difficult um, uh, experiment, but here is one and what I want you to um, see the arc, uh, uh, this is uh, S 2 and uh, wa what these are are the two, this lower figure is the important one where you are uh, uh, looking at essentially the, uh, uh, this is uh, the, lower, uh, 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 the second order uh, quantity. So, you are looking at the second order quantities over here and here you see uh, this is 6 by 5. This part of it is 6 by 5 and that is what you expected at large wave numbers. So, this you see it over here and then if you see if you did this experiment or did this numerics, it is breaking off from the 6 by 5 to obviously what is a lower slope. So, that is not very good. I mean this is not what you expected. Uh, that, uh, it told you that it is r to the power 2 by 3 and r to the u x uh, go by they add and if they add then it is 6 by 5 at large r and 2 by 3 at small r. And uh, on the other hand if you look at this is not, the, you, uh, you can say that this is not the greatest advertisement for saying that uh, 6 by 5 is at lower and 2 by 3. But uh, certainly, I mean this is bending off, there is absolutely no and r is increasing uh, uh, in uh, this direction. So, there seems to be a problem. So, there seems to be a problem and uh, this is more of the same and it is the same kind of issue that you look at the uh, uh, and you do not see where uh, the 6 by 5 where you should see it and you can use all sorts of words and pictures it does not help. So, well maybe uh, we should, one, so one what one needs, what does one need to do? One needs to go back what we have been saying who flows, what flows is a conserved quantity what is a conserved quantity in this problem? The kinetic energy dynamics is given by this. That is what one gets from the velocity equation. It is not conserved in the eta equal to z limit, uh, eta equal to 0 limit. The, put, uh, the so called potential energy that is the chi square which we had goes like this and that is not conserved, that is not equal to 0 when the dissipation is gone. So, these are by themselves not uh, uh, conserved quantities. So, what do I need to um, uh, uh, argue? Well, you look at the total, you look at the total over here and the, on the other side now I only have lambda and eta. So, if you ignore the dissipation what is conserved, you have a conservation law 
and conservation is this. So, Kolmogorov arguments which we have been using so far can only hold for this conserved quantity which is flowing. So, that is the only conserved quantity and if I want to make any uh, uh, arg Kolmogorov type argument, I have to consider this flux and if it is pure Kolmogorov, then I would say that K dominates and if it is pure Bolsiano, then it is G dominates. And therefore, the dominance is going to be determined not by whether it was 11 by 5 and 5 by 3 in powers of k, but the calculation has to be based on the fact that here is my conserved uh, 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 quantity and I have to let the hydrodynamics do the rest. So, well, I mean uh, that is uh, and now it is e uh, all right. Uh, one uh, uh, small uh, thing over here. This is when I change the signs. Uh, you see, uh, there is a negative sign over here. This negative sign over here for the conserved quantity comes from the fact that I am heating. Uh, I have a unstable situation because I am heating from below. If on the other hand, if I took a stable situation, if I heated from above, all those fancy things which we talked about, uh, uh, stability, uh, the Rayleigh instability and uh, uh, oscillatory uh, the, uh, waves and so on and eventually chaos and chaos to turbulence, all that goes away. All that goes away, but what gets you, if I am interested only in the end point of turbulence, then I have a plus sign over here and life is much simpler. So, you focus on the uh, uh, fact that if you want to get, uh, get at that, you look at only uh, the part where it is a plus sign. So, it is a stable strat stratification and if it is a stable stratification, you get a plus sign and now you are in a position to, um, uh, you are in a, uh, uh, in a, you have the potential for uh, getting the Kolmogorov uh, picture, but you know whose flux I have to consider, but there is the problem that uh, how do I set it up. So, you set to set it up, uh, you look at I mean there is a number which is the you have to compare the two quantities. You compare the two k and the so call this the potential the kinetic energy and this sort of the potential energy and you ask which is bigger and uh, which is smaller and if you do that then you do some rescaling and you find that there is this Richardson number which is determined by the temperature difference delta T which determines if that is big then it is potential energy, if it is 0 then it is kinetic energy. So, that is how the dominance goes and uh, so, so on and therefore, well, at the end of the day, so once I have figured out what how that this is the conserved quantity that calculation has to tailor to um, uh, what uh, the um, uh, keeping that a conserved quantity and doing the hydrodynamics as has to be done with it. If you go ahead and do that, the, uh, the what you get is the strange answer somewhat that it is Bolgiano Obukov at the higher wave number and Kolmogorov at the lower wave. The crossover, the crossover happens with the Kolmogorov falling at the large k, uh, the small k level and the Bolgiano falling at the high. Then that is what you get if you still have the starting point as the conserved quantity is what is the really conserved quantity and assume nothing else. So, that is the way it stands and that is with the last thing over here. Here is the uh, numerics carried out some almost 7 or uh, 8 years ago um, uh, 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 on uh, this uh, 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 
problem with a stable um, uh, temperature that is heated from above. And here you see the energy, kinetic energy spectrum, and this is normalized by 11 by 5. And here you will find that 11 by 5 is reasonable, and k to the power 5 by 3 is not reasonable at all. And well, if you look at it, uh, what, do I have another? No, I don't. So uh, if uh, the k, so 11.5 is reasonable there, and uh, not so uh, reasonable when you were. Uh, uh, I mean, or, uh, the two th uh, uh, 11 by 5 is reasonable, but 5 by 3 is not. If you uh, want to be very um, sort of trying to look at things very closely, you would find that the 5 by 3 f does fit this region over here. So if you, the, the 11 by 5 is going to uh, go somewhat over, and then if you were to have a 5 by 3 line, it would probably uh, do be much, somewhat better over here. This is low k, and this is high k. So you can try to sort of push your um, uh, luck and say that, look, I mean, this is really showing you uh, that it is 11 by 5 at lower k, uh, but uh, it's not the greatest data with which one can play around. That is the, be there are a couple of others in literature which are of a similar kind. So the thing would be that if people were to do uh, this uh, thing seriously and carefully, numerically or experimentally, and uh, as you can see, it's the reverse in the uh, case of the coordinates, you should be seeing this picture over here. This is actually somewhat clearer. And, uh, as I said, that uh, over here you see the six by five translating, uh, uh, going over to six by five, going over to certainly a number smaller than six by five as you go to larger r. So that is the um, uh, uh, that is in keeping with the statement that in the momentum space it is eleven by five at large momentum and five by three at lower. Uh, and once again, I mean, uh, the point is that would one uh, be doing, these are pretty um, uh, difficult and uh, uh, sort of uh, time-taking simulations and so on. But anyway, here is the, that is the problem, this crossover is a bit which is not really clear at the moment, so there are still uh, many other things to be done. This is one that I know of that uh, is, uh, at least from my point of view, good to look at. So thank you very much. It's Questions? So maybe I will start. Uh, so basically, if I understand correctly, right? So if you take different type of turbulent system, so I think one thing, the first thing which basically we look for is the conserved quantity and the flow of it, right? right. And a priori, it is not clear what is uh, what is going to play the crucial role, right? In the sense, like uh, what because you you showed in the previous examples, it was just the kinetic energy all the way, right? And only when the, you know, like in the last examples, uh, the potential energy also get, got added up, and then that that became the new conserved quantity, a combination of it with the kinetic energy. Yeah. So if you just if if we just look at also a, a different type of turbulent system, right? So is it like the first thing which we should look after is the conserved quantity, it, and the, what is it? Yeah. Uh, so the message is that first look for the conserved quantity. See, when I, I had an example where there were two. Right. It's a, a, and the two would drive their own fluxes. Correct. And you have the instrophy flux going to higher wave numbers. And the, so if you have two conserved quantities, you are certainly going to see two um, uh, 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 fluxes and two kinds of scaling from that. 
with one conserved quantity you can have two different scalings, but I mean you can't sort of from two different scalings you cannot say uh, that uh, I have two from two different scalings I cannot say that there are two conserved quantities. That has to come from the science. That, that, that's my uh, point. That I have to, when I'm doing a problem in this uh, area, I have to look for if there is a question, if the Kolmogorov picture, that there is something cascading down, and whatever is, cask is a conserved quantity, then that what I have to look at is what is the, if there are two conserved quantities, then the problem arises that if one is the other, is it also cascading down or is it cascading up? So the d equal to 2 example tells you that look, I mean, yeah, but the energy cascades goes up and this goes down. Goes down. And when it comes to this one, uh, well, it is just one conserved quantity. And if there are two different scalings, you, it is not where you will see that scaling is not going to be determined by which power of k uh, works in which region, but you better do the calculation. I mean, no longer is dimensional argument the answer because the conserved quantity is linked. The crossover is in the conserved quantity and not Therefore, I mean, what the spectrum, the spectrum, mind you, is kinetic energy. It does not add, right? It is just, it, it is no longer, before this we were talking about the spectrum is kinetic energy and whatever, I mean, all right, it is either determined by, it is determined by the conserved quantity and all right, one conserved quantity and you have, here also it is one conserved quantity. So the kinetic energy has to be, uh, con uh, but these two conserved quantities scale in different ways. They have their own scaling and you better uh, keep that in mind before, I mean, you uh, do anything. So uh, that, that, that is the, I mean, power counting is not the way uh, to uh, go about it. That's the point. I mean that there is in fact yeah, there is dynamics over here and you have to look at the dynamics and how it uh, unfolds. And people, I, 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 just one more question. So people do tabletop experiments, is it? Like with turbulence, I, I don't uh, know. Uh, tabletop experiments don't give you any spectra. I see. See, I mean, those would, uh, th 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 those were actually good for uh, yeah, giving you some idea that a spectrum exists and so on and so forth. So it is entirely numerics. Mm -hmm. So uh, exper actual experiments are, I mean, accu experiments which can accurately uh, probe the, these, uh, See, you are talking about uh, k, uh, these length scale dependences, which are something like 10 orders of, uh, 5 or 6 orders of magnitude. That is experimentally very difficult. So, it is almost all numerical experiments. So, you mentioned that um, these scalings uh, can be connected to some renormalization group equations and yeah. things like that. Are there any studies to s uh, find out what are the corrections coming from uh, un underlying dynamics through anomalous yeah. dimensions? Yeah, yes, right. Uh, violation uh, of scaling, you know. Uh, yes, right. Uh, the, pro uh, the problem is uh, over there that uh, one would like to does the renormalization group fixed point exist? For that, I actually need to do a calculation. All right, now actually doing a calculation is, I have to do, I mean, so I want 
to get in um, uh, uh, get into that i would have to actually um, uh, write uh, integral it would be a loop wise expansion so uh, uh, it's a loop wise expansion and i would have to for example if i were to do a dimensional regularization i would pick out the poles from uh, the uh, so this is where um, uh, the uh, difficulty um, uh, comes in that uh, if you are, I mean, if you have to implement it, you would have to give the random force a form through which, I mean, because that in the perturbation theory calculation, it would come up as some, the correlator. So I need to give a correlator form. So there was in the late 70s a model where the correlator was specially chosen so that you could use the exponent of the noise to, I mean, uh, the uh, spectrum of the uh, correlator to set up a perturbation theory. The problem was that uh, the, in extracting the pole, for example, I mean, if it's a, a critical, you look at d equal to 4, and there are no other singular. Problem is, over here, there is an extraneous singularity, which has nothing to do with the, uh, and that is why those, cal they were sort of, uh, 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 a question mark about the whole business and uh, um, the yeah uh, that 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 but yeah I mean there is where well, was a sizable amount of literature who tried to use the um, uh, RG saying that we will use it as a long distance we will like to get it in the k tending to zero so use that fixed point um, but that. Well, never became, I mean, never was totally accepted because, I mean, there were these uh, somewhat artificial nature of the uh, forcing that you were putting in. Okay, are there any further questions? Hi, I just have a naive, a naive question that uh, uh, just like first time I am hearing about turbulence. Uh, what is the, f uh, like if in one sentence, what would be the difference between a chaotic system and a turbulent system? Is there uh, any difference or? Yeah, yeah, uh, the chaotic system uh, does, uh, goes with the ODEs. So it is only a chaotic dynamics in time. This, as you can, I mean, the time over here was there, I mean, because there was a base, but one was looking at spatial patterns, which is not a part of the uh, chaotic dynamics. The chaotic dynamics is not interested in, uh, if I were to do chaotic, I would simply look at V uh, as a, I mean, solve the equation for the velocity field as a function of time and find a very complicated and look at sensitivity to initial conditions and so on. But I mean, the uh, uh, turbulence people want to look at the spatial dependence, which is not a part of the uh, chaos literature. Yeah. Thank you. That, 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 that's the only, that, that's the difference. So does that mean that this chaotic, sorry, hi. Yeah. Does that mean that this chaotic behavior can happen at all length scales at each of those yes, wave numbers? Right. I mean, there is chaotic flow at every scale, yes. I see, okay. Yeah. And it is out of that every scale that you want to pick some feature out. Uh, this is on something that you have not covered, so, but I think you have done some work on this, on this new thing called bacterial turbulence. Yeah. So man, people yeah. find different kind of spectra and so on. So yeah. if, if you're insight on this. Uh, uh, well, I mean, it is more or less like the one which I talked about, where the point was that the velocity nonlinearity, uh, the Navier-Stokes equation uh, wore, uh, had a stress tensor 
which came from the concentration of the uh, whatever was flowing around inside the fluid. So, as I call it bacteria, call it what have you. Uh, so, it was that nonlinearity was used in pref as the driving nonlinearity as opposed to the uh, v dot grad v. So, if I use that as the nonlinearity over there and then use the uh, standard diffu uh, diffusion equation for the concentration variable, we get into a different cross. Over here, it was the minus 5 by 3 crossing over to the uh, 11 by by 5. Uh, over there, we get into a different kind of crossover, one where the nonlinearity in the uh, 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 this, uh, what do you um, uh, uh, call it? I mean, if I were to uh, do this as a virial um, uh, expansion, there is a Burnett, Burnett, second order Burnett term, which the uh, 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 that in the Navier-Stokes equation, if you have some density, um, uh, right, there is or a conserved quantity appropriately formed out of the, so which is called, so where that Burnett term dominating, you have one kind of spectrum and the other uh, is the, uh, so it's a crossover, but with a, a, a driver being the Burnett term over there. So you can have three uh, parts over there. You can have the Burnett term driving. You can have the V dot grad V driving. So that's one. And then you can have the other driving. So that there is. Uh, so you can actually have three of them uh, across over. But the essential feature was having a, a driver in the Navier-Stokes equation, which is uh, coming, which is uh, uh, in turn related to a modification of a model age of critical, which Michael Cates and company had done uh, uh, some years ago. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, so if not, let's uh, thank Professor Jacoby again for this wonderful talk. So uh, tomorrow there is going to be an interaction meeting with him at 2.30 uh, Aladi Hall. So please do drop by whoever are interested. Okay, so thanks.